Good afternoon and welcome to this session of Wilmington City Council's Finance and Economic Development Committee meeting. Um, today is Monday, April 20th. On March 20th, uh, Mayor Michael Brzezicki presented his, his budget for fiscal year 2021. At that point, it becomes Council's responsibility to review the budget. Uh, this is our third in a series of budget hearings. Today, we will be hearing from the Department of License and Inspection. And following that one, we will hear from the Department of Real Estate and Housing. I just wanted to acknowledge the Council members that are with us today. Uh, President Hanifa Shabazz, First District Council Member Linda Gray, Fourth District Council Member Michelle Harley, Council Member at Large Rashima Dixon, Council Member at Large Ciro Adams. Did I miss anyone? Okay. Um, what I'd like to do is just kind of run through the format that we've been following. Um, we will have a brief presentation by the Office of Management and Budget. Uh, then we will turn it over to the uh, Commissioner of LNI, Mr. Jeff Starkey. Uh, he will make any kind of presentation and then we will jump right into the uh, question and answers. Um, we've set a time limit, 90 minutes uh, for, this, for this budget hearing. I will ask council members to keep all questions to budgetary matters. Any programmatic or constituent issues should be addressed in other forums. If we don't complete all the questions in the timeline that we have, uh, I encourage you to look at the department response or follow up with the department commissioner or with Michelle Bassnight, our chief of staff, who's also with us today. Um, there will be some time allotted at the end of the hearing for constituent comments. And anyone who would like to speak and raise their hand any time during the meeting um, and then they will be recognized in that public comment period. I will ask that they keep their comments to three minutes and that the comments pertain to the budget hearing at hand, which is Department of License and Inspection. Um, as we all know, uh, this budget was prepared late last year, early this year, uh, before the uh, pandemic uh, hit us. But uh, we're going to go through the, the process, uh, but I believe we'll see changes in this budget, and we probably will be back in the fall to revisit the budget uh, once we know what kind of losses we've taken in everything. So having said that, at this point, I'm going to turn it off over to the Office of Management Budget, who is representing them today. I am Mr. Chairman. Excuse me? I am Mr. Chairman Daniel Owens. Daniel, how are you, sir? Okay, okay. Nice to hear from you. You ready to go? Sure, I am. Um, to start to say uh, good afternoon chairman friel madam president and honorable members of city council i would like to thank you for inviting me to present the licenses and inspections fiscal year 2021 proposed budget on the budget request on behalf of the office of management and budget first let me remind you that further details on the lni budget can be found in the budget packet as well as in your budget book beginning on page 128. Additionally, I would like to add that the budget details I am presenting here are based on the original proposed budget, which was developed prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. Commissioner Starkey will be discussing revisions to some of his budget items during his part of the presentation. With that being said, the LNI department is requesting a total budget of $5.66 million in FY 2021. This total request represents an increase of $98,000 or 1.8%. Funding for the department is derived solely from the general fund. Personal services increased $173,000 or 4.1%. This was mainly due to an increase in regular salaries, which are up $129,000 or 5.2%. The contractual agreement between the city and the Ask Me Local 1102, of which nearly 80% of LNI's employees belong to, provided a $500 increase to each employee's 
base salary in addition to a 2% cost of living adjustment or COLA. A 2% COLA was also budgeted for all other city employees. Hospitalization costs also increased up nearly $27,000 or 3.5%. MS&E decreased a total of $41,000 or 5.3%. $12,000 was added to furniture, fixtures, and office equipment to provide more ergonomic chairs and desks to the LNI staff. However, this increase was more than offset by decreases to demolition and hazardous cleanup costs. To more properly align with the historical actuals, demolition costs are now budgeted at $350,000, a $50,000 decrease, while hazardous cleanup is budgeted at $15,000, a $15,000 decrease. Internal services increased by $16,000. This was primarily due to an additional vehicle being added to the LNI fleet for the zoning enforcement officer at a cost of $15,000. The animal control account line, which consists of money transmitted to the state of Delaware for animal control services, decre decreased $51,000 or 16.6% to reflect the actual contractual costs. This concludes my presentation of the 2021 proposed budget request for the LNI department. I'm happy to answer any questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, I do wanna make one clarification. Uh, there will be a public comment period at the end of each hearing. So at the end of LNI, we'll have a public comment period and then Again, at the end of real estate and housing, we'll have a separate public comment period. All right, at this time, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over. I also want to mention that we are joined by the, uh, the Chief of Staff for Mayor Brzezicki, Tanny Washington. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to the Commissioner of, uh, of License and Inspection, Mr. Jeff Starkey. Jeff, did you unmute your uh, button? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Before I start, I'd just like to add I'm having some low bandwidth, so I'm popping in and out. So if you, if, if I pop out, uh, that's the reason. Uh, I just want to thank you, Councilman Frill, and members of City Council, for, for providing us the opportunity to present our 2021 budget. First, our prayers go out to anyone who may be experiencing the negative impact of coronavirus. Secondly, I want, I want to thank our staff for continuing to provide LNI services to our constituents. We are being challenged every single day while we navigate through this crisis. Our staff has stayed the course as their daily activities and processes have changed. For that, I'm thankful. Now we are prepared to start the presentation. Okay, sir. Uh, our vision, Department License Inspection strives to promote and protect a safe living and working environment for all citizens of the City of Wilmington. This is achieved by implementation of fair and unbiased, unbiased Wilmington City Codes. Our goal is to facilitate voluntary compliance by working in partnership with our constituents. Together, we can successfully achieve a prosperous future for our city. Uh, Department of Pro Priorities for this year, um, and this was some of this was prior to coronavirus, schedule and complete 2,000 rental inspections, uh, continue to explore converting housing violations to criminal civil, from criminal to civil penalties, and identify non-licensed rental property owners. A performance measure, respond to all constituent complaints within 48 hours of receipt. Uh, inspectors compliance rates for inspectors and track and identify non-rental license owners. Okay, you ready to get ready for the questions, Mr. Starkey? Ready to go. Okay, uh, discuss the budgetary account lines that could potentially be impacted as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Well, obviously, since this occurred, uh, we'll be purchasing a lot more PPEs, which is personal protective equipment. Uh, that's when the line of obviously is going to go up when we get back to normal. And as we're continuing to work through this process now, uh, we anticipate potentially our overtime going up as well. Uh, and our consultant line item uh, is going to go up potentially. Why do you feel the consultant line will go up? Well, as you can see, we're, we're anticipating deleting the vacant uh, plans examiner position. Uh, and right now, that will leave us with one. So we would bring a consultant in periodically to to assist us to reviewing uh, construction plans? Okay. Um, well, you might have answered this question then. Uh, discuss any current vacant positions, duration of vacancy, timeline for filling the position. Well, our plans examiner position has been vacant since 2012, 2000, I mean, February, two, February 12, 2020, I'm sorry. Uh, we also had a retirement of our, our existing plans examiner, which was in November of 2000. Uh, 19. So we've been short on plans examiners in the last, I would probably say, year or so. Do you uh, discuss any proposed changes to positions, any new positions deleted, upgrades, downgrades? We currently have none. What we just discussed. Um, Discuss the 500,000 budget between the property maintenance and demolition account lines. Uh, we have performed demolitions and various structural st stabilizations on properties that could potentially lead to demolitions if the owners don't rectify the conditions. We continue to monitor those properties and reserve funding for that work. Uh, anticipated demos, uh, 903, 905 Kirkwood Street, we stabilize those, they could lead to demolition. 734 East 6th Street, uh, we stabilize that one as well, could lead to potential demolition. 1016 West 3rd, uh, and again, uh, we stabilize the property, could lead to demolition. And just Thursday of last week, we had a major fire at 109 West 26, which we're in the process of demolishing now, which is a major, major project. Uh, we typically don't uh, use up all of our demolition. We try to get through the winter uh, and try to work, start working on it around uh, April or so, uh, just to make sure we get through the winter and we have enough funding available to do demolition. But we've had two in the last couple of days, have 109 West 26, major warehouse, church, fire. Uh, it's gonna cost us up, up where, probably in the $90,000 range. Uh, we have one Sunday, uh, Council President Anifa Cervantes is aware of this one, 1126 B Street, which we're in the process of demolition, dem demolishing now, uh, starting tomorrow, which is going to cost us about 45000 So those two in the last week, uh, things can change very rapidly. Ant anticipated property maintenance issues, based on our property maintenance budget, our, our historical data is received from inspectors' field inspections. However, it's done on a case-by-case -case basis. Although it was mentioned in the question that we've only spent 31,000. Uh, that's actually incorrect. Uh, we had a carryover PO which allowed us to use some of that money as well. So we're up in the range of probably about 50, 59,000 now on property man maintenance alone. Uh, we haven't received invoices since for, for February and March. So he's got a, a ton of invoices to get in uh, to, to be paid. So we're trending pretty close, probably a little lower than what we did last year. Just, just because we've had a, a calm winter, uh, but that's where we are with those two line items. Next slide, you'll see, uh, that's the picture of the fire that was ha that happened Thursday. Uh, it was a major fire, the building's totally destroyed. Property owner has no funding, so we'll end up, actually, we've actually torn it down. So it's already down now. Uh, so we gotta foot that bill and actually bill the owner for that. The three that you're looking at on the next slide, Kirkwood Street, we stabilized. That's the 903-905 Kirkwood. Uh, the owner hasn't done that since we stabilized it. The one in the middle is uh, East 6th Street. It's been stabilized. That's a three-story building. And the one to your far right is 1000 block of West 3rd Street. That owner has no funding as well. Uh, it could potentially lead to a demolition as well. Um, discuss the 265000 allocated for animal control 
by the number of animals retrieved compared with the same time last year? Uh, animal control is actually housed in here, and it's a state contract. Uh, we basically get the numbers from the from the uh, animal control office, uh, which is displayed on the on the screen. All right. So in the fiscal year 2018, there were 618 animals retrieved, and this year 851. So a jump of over 200. Right. And they, they go by quarters by calendar year. Right. Okay. Um, discuss the plan use of 68,000 budgeted memberships, registration, and the wearing and apparel account groupings. Well, em employee certification and CEUs, which is continuing education units, uh, training us per union contract for our employees that hold certifications, all require resource books and materials for inspectors to perform their, their job tasks and provide no necessary safety equipment for employees as per union contract, which obviously we're in the coronavirus, so we're gonna up that as well. The employee certification, uh, has any of that been put on hold because of, uh, of the uh, virus? And not, people not getting together as, as far as it being done more through Zoom meetings, things like that, you know? Well, we had actually scheduling two of them by the end of the year, but most likely they'll be canceled. So uh, it'll probably run into whenever we're released to do you know, gatherings. I'm not so sure they're doing the Zoom as of yet, the ICC organization that we use, but we're looking into that as well. When you say the end of the year, you refer to the fiscal year or the calendar year? Fiscal year. We usually schedule one in May and June. Gotcha. Okay. Um, discuss the plan use of 50000 budgeted for professional fees. Well, as I mentioned, we have several different consultants as, that we use. Uh, the structural engineer who conduct assessments of structural issues, issues including properties slated for demolition. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, our plan review consultant due to vacancy and retirements. Uh, we bring in periodically a roof consultant to assist us uh, when we have a question with roof, as well as a tree consultant. And then also in that line item is our GPS tracking for our vehicles. If why would you need to bring in a, a tree consultant? Uh, wouldn't that be handled by uh, uh, the individual in uh, public works? He, he can never facilitate the, the, the the amount of, of tree requests that we get. I mean, he's so busy with the trees that he's dealing with. Uh, we were usually put on the back burner, to be very honest. And he deals primarily with the public trees. We're dealing with private property trees, more issues. Uh, he just can't get to our stuff in most cases. Okay. Discuss the 50,000 budgeted for overtime, uh, specified process for checking permits for weekends and evening hours. Our overtime is primarily used for the emergency on-call person, which we have a person on 24-hour call after 4.30, uh, and also accommodate staffing for our L&I review board. Uh, right now, there is no funding in there for any weekends or permit or evening checks. So anyone that complains about work going on a weekend, uh, you really can't visit that issue until Monday morning. That's correct. Discuss the budgetary request for an additional new motor vehicle to be added to the city's fleet. Well, as you know, we added a zoning enforcement officer, uh, but we're, one, we're short one vehicle for that person. Uh, so that vehicle will be critical for him to do his following up on zoning related issues. Uh, he started around October, August or October, I think somewhere around there. Uh, so he's on board now. Uh, but don't have a vehicle for him to use at, at this point. Is an item like that potentially going to be cut because of the uh, because of the financial crisis we're going to find ourselves in, or we're already in due to the virus? Well, I mean, I, I have to meet with the chief of staff in the mayor's office just to, you know, I'm sure we're going to go back and look at all the budgets right now. Uh, some of this was put together prior to Corona. 
Okay. Um, uh, the last question is the same for all departments. It's the uh, it's the org chart that council members can review at their leisure. Um, were there any questions from council members? Right now, right now the org chart has in there 43, but we, we're recommended to delete that one position, so it would actually be 42. Okay, thank you, Jim. Uh, okay, uh, we'll go ahead and start. Uh, we've been joined, which I didn't realize, with my council member, uh, Chris Johnson, and we'll go ahead and start with him with the first question. Mr. Johnson? Thank you very much, Chairman Friel. Yes, yes, I'm up. okay. Um, just in regard to the, the, the vacant property demo line, um, has L and I uh, gone into or researched um, using clear boarding at all for vacant properties instead of the standard wood boarding? Uh, we looked at that some years ago, but we haven't looked at it recently. Okay. Um, is that something that the LNI it, it could possibly pursue down the line? Because um, it's my understanding that you know the, the technology has advanced in, within the past few years, maybe making it a little bit more cost effective. Certainly, we can look at it. I mean, we will look at any new technology, uh, but you know, we'll take a look at it as well. Okay, and uh, Chairman, I have a follow-up question. Sure. Um, just in regard to the budget line for aggressive code enforcement, um, it's uh, budget line uh, 101-210. Um, what does that entail? Is that is that this inspector time? Is that extra overtime that's included in that? Because I, I did notice the line is, um, you know, fairly substantial. It's about 350000 So is that an all-encompassing budget line? That's primarily used for demolition of buildings. Okay. Okay, so it's not code enforcement as much, but but it's demo work. It's demo work, as I mentioned, uh, we had a fire on <coughs> last week. That's gonna cost us about $95,000. Okay. All right, I have, I have no further questions, Chairman. Thank you. Hey, Council Member uh, Gray. I just have two questions. I'd like to know why there was a decrease in the animal control money if you picked up more animals this year than last year, or was that the state that picked up more animals? It's my understanding that the county chipped in their portion of it and that decreased our, our total bill for animal control, but I'll have to confirm that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. And one more. Um, has anything been considered or are people thinking about how to, what, sanitize an apartment? If you know someone has had the virus and they've moved out of the apartment, there should be a two week, 14 day, um, you know, exposure from someone moving in or using that apartment. Has Ellen and I thought about that? Or do you think the landlords are aware of that? No, we haven't had those conversations yet, but I'm sure once this is all over, we'll be having a lot of conversation on, on how we deal with, you know, inspections, condition of properties and so forth. Thank you, because the only reason I brought that up is there's um, evidence that it lives 14 days on hard surfaces. So someone unfortunately had the virus and moved out. I was just concerned about the next person moving in, but thank you. Understood. Council Member Dixon. Um, thank you, um, Chairman Farrell. Um, I had two questions, um, maybe three. I think I got two and one. Um, so one is uh, for, I saw for the furniture line that there's an increase of $12,000. Will that be considered to be cut due to, um, since it's a non-essential? Uh, actually, I, I would prefer that not because cause some of these folks are sitting in chairs that are or, or not, you know, in good condition. So, if no, in order for them to really fulfill their tasks and to do their jobs, they need to be sitting in something uh, worthy of sitting in. Otherwise, you know, we may have some medical issues with it. 
I mean, some of them are for ergonomic chairs, and that's the purpose of them. Is there, uh, is, and just to follow up to that, is there a way to um, either find refurbished or something that's uh, at, a, at a cheaper price in order to um, still accommodate that need? Um, not sure. I haven't looked that far into it. I mean, some of these chairs are probably 15 years old. They haven't been replaced in so long. So uh, we really need to look at you know, providing them the necessary tools to do their jobs. Okay. Um, and then my next question would be, I saw that in a, uh, and it kind of go off of the, the demolition uh, conversation that already started. Um, one, um, so I understand why there's an increase in it, but um, I also saw that for each year prior, um, the numbers are not um, equaling up to as much as was budgeted for. Is there a reason why are you being replenished for some of those funds or um, are they just not being used? Well, everything that we do, you know, demolition-wise and property maintenance-wise, we, we build a property on it. So in some cases we get, you know, replenish those funds. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's somewhat difficult sometimes to anticipate what's going to fall, what needs to fall. Uh, we try to be cautious with that as, as much as possible. So uh, we wasn't anticipating it too far that, or the fire we had the other day or the structural wall that's fallen. So uh, that just happened. And, and it happens like that sometimes. Yeah. Um, and then just a, a last follow-up to that. Um, how often are we picking up the tab for people who cannot afford to pay for their demolition? If it deals with any safety issues, we do it. We have to do it. We can't leave it in an unsafe uh, condition. Uh, the fire that happened Thursday, the roof was hanging off. We had to go in there and do something with it because uh, kids are playing around there a lot. So uh, we make sure that it's, it's code compliant when we leave. Uh, and then, I, like, as I mentioned before, we send them a bill for that work. And how much are, do you, I mean, you may not know this offhand, but how much are we picking up the tab? I guess I'm just trying to number wise know how much we're, we're picking up um, if they're unable to pay for it. Well, every property maintenance one we do, we pick up the tab until, unless they pay us and we send them a bill for it. Same thing with the demolition. Uh, they can't afford to do it, and it's a safety issue. We take care of the issue. Is there um, my last follow? Is there a way for us just to get some uh, a range or just a number of how much um, it's costing us to do that? Well, if you if you look at the expenditures, that'll tell you what we spent. Uh, we were not going to do it if they could afford to do it. So if we spend the money, then we're picking up the tab for it initially. Anyway, I can. I think what she's asking, Jeff, do we ever recoup any of the any of that money that we use with demolition line, or yeah. is it pretty much to the point where we end up taking them to sheriff sale or something like that? Well, rarely, rarely we do we recoup. Every now and then we, we may recoup some of it, uh, but you got to realize that we spend thirty, forty thousand dollars on demolition. By the time we're done, the lot's probably worth two thousand uh, dollars. So in most cases, we have to take it to sheriff sale to, to recover anything from it. Thank you. But I could go back and, and see if we recovered any any funds from either demolition or property maintenance. Thank you, we appreciate that. Uh, Council Member Harley? Yes, thank you. So yes, I was um, asking Commissioner Starkey uh, what happened on B and Hill Street. And that's where we left off. That's the last place where I left off. All right, Mr. Starkey, you still with us? Yeah, can you hear me? I yes. can now, yeah. yes. yes. Yes, so we received a call from uh, Council President Anifa Shabazz on Saturday that she received a complaint from someone that says that the building was uh, in fear of collapsing. So we immediately sent someone over to take a look at it. And uh, in fact, the roof is now compromised. So we had all the cars removed uh, and had a barricade and in the process of demolishing, hopefully starting tomorrow, because uh, the roof is completely gone and the walls are pushing out. Okay, so did you have another question, Councilmember Harley? She, she's a, she, we lost her again. Councilmember Harley, are you still with us? Commissioner? Yes, we, yes. We lost you. yes, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you now. Yes, yeah, so. Who will who gets the bill for that? 
the property owner gets billed for it. Okay. All right. So um, I guess we can talk about this offline um, because I think there's an opportunity throughout the city. Hello? She keeps going in and out. I'm sorry, Ms. Harley, we keep losing you. And there may be an opportunity for us to put a policy in place that even if your property is paid off, you know, maybe they're, you know, they can be required to still have whole, you know, property insurance. You for the vacant one. property? Yes, sir. Yes, like I said, we can talk about it offline. I just know that they're, they're in. All right, Ms. Harley, you keep, uh, Councilman Harley, you keep going in and out. So we're going to kind of move on. It's okay. And you can discuss this issue with uh, the commissioner further. Talk about it on offline. Yeah, definitely. But thanks for that information because I seen that incident on uh, social media. I couldn't tell if it was a fire or what was going on. So thank you for that um, update. And then my second question real quick is that you said that um, we're going to be getting uh, PPEs in. And I guess my question is, is the city going to be giving out um, mask or, you know, do you know anything about that? I know the chief of staff is on this call. I've been getting calls about it and I just wanted to know if we're going to be giving them out. The ones I'm referring to are just for our employees that are doing inspections. Okay. Um, is the chief of staff still on the line? Yes, I'm here. Hi, how you Hi. doing? Yeah. I'm, uh, are you speaking of the general public? Yes. I mean, are you aware of um, any any initiatives that we're doing to to provide masks? It's just a question. Yes. So um, that question has come before the COVID working group. So they're working on something, getting masks out to the general public. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have, Councilman Friel. Thank you. Uh, before I went out, I zoomed out. I believe Councilmember Adams had a question. Did you ever get to ask your question? Uh, actually, uh, thank you, Chairman Friel. Uh, yes, uh, um, I gave way to uh, uh, Council Lady Harley so she could finish her uh, questions. Okay. With that, okay. I, I have two uh, unrelated questions for uh, Commissioner Stark. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Stark, uh, with regard to uh, rental inspections, how many rental inspections did you do last year and how many will you do in the coming fiscal year? Uh, I don't have the number from me, but it, somewhere I think, if I recall correctly, we were in the 1700 range, uh, but I'll confirm that with you. Uh, our goal for this year was to do 2000. Oh, super, super good, good. Glad to hear that. and. Uh, Hey, hopefully we'll keep that number going up for the, each year. Uh, the other unrelated question, with regard to the demolitions uh, of these properties, and now you had four on the screen here or whatever. Um, <clears throat> how long from the time when you finished the demolition to those properties are transferred into the land bank? Uh, uh, you know, in other words, uh, how long does the city actually have a hold on that? Uh, I know there were many questions asked about the cost of that, but uh, I would just like to know uh, how long from the time you uh, demolished the building to its uh, transition into the land bank. Well, keep in mind, when we get involved, we don't own the property, so we're demolishing them and then we have to put a lien on them or send them a bill. Uh, then we would have to take it to sheriff's in order to take ownership of it. So uh, the time frame, I'm not exactly sure how long that will take. Uh, but it can take up to a year or so, depends on the circumstance. Uh, but again, we don't own them, so we're just demolishing them just to rectify the safety issue, and then we have to put a lien on the property. Okay, so these properties that you had listed on your budget then were, uh, were private properties uh, where I guess uh, uh, the uh, condition of the building was so poor that they needed to be demolished. And then you subscribe. That's correct. And they're all, 
okay. Yeah, they're all privately owned, so. Got it. Uh, you know, they're probably, probably own and they own, they're probably own and the owners aren't responding to our, our notices or in the case of an emergency, uh, we emergency demolish it. Uh, uh, certainly, and I understood that there was a major fire that uh, would be an emergency. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, actually, Director Starkey, I, I believe I asked you the same question last year, and I apologize for that. Thank you. Hey, guy, you have a good day. I'm done, uh, Chairman Friel. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Uh, President Shabazz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Commissioner, can you share with everyone, I mean, the... You know, Go ahead. All right. It won't let me. Okay, there it is. You gotta meet me. Um, could you share with everyone the, the the variance of cost of a demolition? I know that sometimes it could be. I know you said forty thousand, but I've also known there's a um, that no, there's also a time when a demolition could cost maybe six, fifty to fifty, sixty thousand dollars. I just just trying just for information purpose so that people would understand the cost of demolitions. Well, right now we're getting prices for two stories. Probably depends on if they're two walls versus one wall between thirty five and forty five thousand. To get up to three stories, you're probably forty five to sixty thousand. Okay. Uh, and the one that we had the other day, which was unusual, which was the warehouse. Uh, that's going to be up in the range of eighty to ninety thousand. Okay, um, thank you. And you usually do. Uh, we don't. We don't do that in house. We commission or contract someone out to do that. Correct. That's that's correct. Uh, we try to. We usually bid them out. Uh, we try to get three quotes when it's not a non emergency. Uh, and if it's emergency, then we just call who's available at that time to get it done. Which is why we have to have some money on hand to do so if we have an emergency demolition. Absolutely. Okay. Um, also, when you mentioned too about the increase of animals that you um, that that the um, you were able to exterminate, was any of them raccoons, or were they all uh, pest control? Was that all just the cats and dogs from the pest control um, division of the state? Well, I think the, the animal control is mainly for the dogs. Uh, we generally do pest control out of another line item periodically. Okay. We don't have a specific line item for that. So uh, we just try to pick it up occasionally every now and then when we get a chance to do it. That's not what he said. I kept moving it around. But, th but that, was, that was not the reason for the increase of number of animals because you did any, any the, the amount of raccoons that Councilwoman Oliver has in her district. No, that's not even listed in there. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's all I have. Hey, uh, I don't see any other questions from council members. My, no, my hand is up. Raise hand. I'm showing up here. Right uh, Oliver. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, I can. Oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, no, I, I want to um, clarify that um, it had a gentleman come out and uh, private contractor and he was able to catch a raccoon and that was from public works so maybe okay um, so they caught quite a few of raccoons on the north side of town i went out there and met with him um and like i said i, I met with that was from public works but um okay. even with even with uh la9 they were able to come out and catch some possums not raccoons but public works was able to catch some um raccoons okay Okay, thank you. Um, not seeing any other questions from council members, I'm gonna open it up. Uh, if anyone from the public would like to make comment uh, in regards to the budget for department license inspection, you can raise your hand at this time. Not seeing any hands raised. All right, so we're going to go ahead and conclude this hearing with the Department of License Inspection. We're going to take a little break, and we will be back at 530 with the Department of Real Estate and Housing. Uh, I thank you all for your attendance and participation. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you.